Let's go ahead and do the most important thing about this app, which is setting up the server um, to relate with our app here. Um, in order to do that, let's first understand what server we're talking to. So this isn't something we're writing ourselves. Um, this is a, uh, a Pokemon API, if you want to go to Google and look it up, that is, uh, it's this link right here, pokeapi.co, uh, the Pokemon RESTful API. This Pokemon API, it's basically like somebody's server that they set up with a bunch of data on Pokemon that they allow you to make uh, REST API calls to from any front end application and you don't need an API key. So they've served, you know, over 188 million people with their, well, maybe not people, but they've made over 188 million API calls. So that's quite a few Pokemon that have uh, been looked up on here. So basically it's as simple as this. If I wanted to look up, let's say, um, let's look up mute or uh, mu I think which one's which mu is 151 I think all right let's look up mu and I hit submit right here on their website um, it might take a minute there it is so mu comes back uh, data on mu comes back in the form of JSON which is uh, JavaScript object notation if you're not familiar um, so we can readily take this information and put it in our app and then start displaying it on screen. However, you know, it's not like we're going to go to the website every single time, type in whatever we want for the Pokemon, and then copy and paste this data in there. No, we're going to be able to put this right inside of React Native um, using a library called Axios uh, to go and fetch this data at the Poke API server and then bring it back to our app. So what we have to do in order to do that is we're going to go to our terminal, and I'm still left off inside of my PokeSearch project, so I'm just going to be able to do uh, my yarn ad from here but if you're not here make sure you pause the video and uh, you know get get your terminal or your command prompt back uh, directory set back to the project so in here I'm gonna say yarn add axios just like I did with the native base and hit enter and what axios is going to be doing right now is um, going out and fetching from uh, the NPM uh, database uh, a open source project called Axios and what Axios does is it allows you to very easily make uh, an API call to a server. You don't have to do a lot of uh, fetch programming or anything like that. Uh, sometimes if, you, if you're not using Axios it can kind of be a, a pain to go and get the information that you need to. So I got my app running over here. We're not actually going to be changing the way this looks in this uh, program. If I go up to the top I am going to import Axios from Axios, and I'm going to turn down my, my lighting a little bit. Um, so we're importing Axios, the variable, from that uh, library called Axios, and then inside of Search Pokey, we're going to start taking advantage of it. So the first thing we want to do, whenever somebody hits that search button right here, uh, I was going to put a button over here, like an actual search button, but I, I'm, I'm going with like the search icon button that you have to press in order to search um, for a couple of reasons. Mostly it's it's Android's fault. Um, so blame people who are using Android for that reason. Um, the reason why is because Android with the header is a little incompatible and I didn't want to do a whole series on fixing that just so we could uh, you know have a search button over here. So um, anytime somebody presses on this icon for search, it's going to make this search call. So let's say the search pokey function is running. Well, what do we want to do? We want to make sure that the state is set to true, right? We want to make sure that our on call for, so sorry, on call is set to true because whenever on call is true, Pikachu is holding this phone and walking around and it's signifying some sort of loading or waiting process. So we, we always want to make sure that's true whenever uh, we start this up. The next thing we want to do is go ahead and say Axios dot get so we're making an axios call to uh, that specific url that uh, pokemon url so we're going to use axios it's going to reach out to this website server and then like make a call for data that'll look something like this right and it's going to return back some data so inside here go ahead and put it in that link so it's http uh, colon slash slash pokey api.co slash api slash v2 slash pokemon kind of a lot there but it's all needed 
And then we're going to make sure that we have another slash in the end because we're going to basically be taking any, uh, like whatever the person searches for and then appending it on here. So the same way I have Pokemon slash 151, you know, I could have had Pokemon slash Charmander or some other number or something. And when it's submitted, it's going to return back, you know, see Charmander data, right? So we want to make sure that whatever the person searches for gets sent here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say this dot state dot pokey search. And then the last thing we want to add on here is a, a JavaScript function called to lowercase. This basically makes all the letters that are input lowercase. Um, the Pokemon database does not take uh, a capital C Charmander. Like if I submitted this, it wouldn't work. It's got to be a lowercase uh, Charmander um, or any Pokemon name in order for it to go and get some data. So we have our axios.get, but we're not doing anything with the information that's going to be coming back. So what we have to do is we have to use uh, a promise uh, dot then function. So we're going to say dot then, we say function, and we're going to take the response, oops, response variable that comes back from the API. And we're just going to like log this data out right now. So we're going to say console.log response dot data, just like this. And before we do anything with it, let's just let's just check this out. Let's see how this looks. So I just saved it. App ran a little bit. I'm going to open up the Expo XDE right here and take a good look at it. So on the right here, I have some uh, console stuff. So whatever's you know getting logged is going to get logged out right here. So if I go to search Pokemon and I go ahead and say, let's go with uh, which one is. Let's go with 150. So we'll go with Mewtwo this time. And I go ahead and click on this search button. So I just click the search button. And it's going out and getting that data. And see, immediately we get this console comeback with all this data on Mewtwo. Now, a lot of this is kind of irrelevant. We're only going to be using a little bit of this. But you can just see um, we don't. it doesn't even say Mewtwo anywhere because uh, that's probably at the top of this. But basically, it's got a ton of data coming back. Uh, because we just looked up U, uh, Mewtwo. In fact, here's here's the weight for Mewtwo. I guess he's he weighs 1,222 or 20 units, whatever that is. Um, so we're logging that data, in, and now we want to take advantage of it. Uh, we want to actually display some of this data on screen. Uh, but we're going to start getting into that in the next couple episodes here. Uh, this one's running a little bit long. I just wanted to show you how the Axios library works, and obviously show you the uh, the Pokemon API that we're taking advantage of. We'll start checking out the data and what we can do with it in the next few videos.